our panel discussion, Promoting God in Your Giftedness, Branding and Ministry, uh, is featuring four professionals, starting with Kathleen Chappelle. And Ms. Chappelle is the Director of Planned Giving at North Shore <coughs> University <coughs> Health System. She's a graduate, uh, graduate of Shimmer College, and she received her MBA from Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville and her JD from Chicago Kent College of Law. She is a highly skilled institutional advancement executive with more than 20 years of experience in nonprofit leadership, fundraising, and communications. Mr. Ryan Hoffman ser currently serves as the Director of Communications at Call to Action USA, where he oversees media outreach brand management, websites, and collateral materials. Ryan completed a master's degree in Christian spirituality, bless you, at Loyola University Chicago in 2008 and graduated with a master's degree in higher education from Iowa State University in 2005. Ms. Carol Semrad is the principal of C. Semrad and Associates and is a seasoned human resource professional with more than 20 years of experience. Carol is a graduate of DePaul University School of, for New L Learning. She is also a director at large for Chicago SHRM and a member of the board of directors for DePaul's Center to Advance Education for Adults. The final individual that we have on, on the, the panel is Mr. Marco Lopez. And Mr. Lopez is currently the director for the Romero Scholars Program here at Catholic Theological Union. I don't have your biography, but I will, I will grab it and inform people okay. more about your story a little later. Sure. Um, but may I present your panel? Mm -hmm. And before we get started, um, just would like the panel to say very briefly, um, I know I read off your biographies, but if there's anything else that you feel that our, our participants ought to know about you before we continue this conversation, please go ahead and take this time now to do so. I could say just a couple of things about my thinking about branding and why I'm interested in it and why I was interested in this panel. And that is that being in advancement, there is um, a great deal of um, moving along in one's career, um, and it's a it's it's a very um, it's a very fluid career. It's changing a lot the way most jobs um, are these days, and so you're always very sensitive about not only what you're doing currently but what you're going to be doing next. And it's a small community when you're in a profession like this, and you have to be very very aware of who you are, what you contribute and how others in the community think about you. Um, and I guess uh, then also, um, along with the fact that there is a lot of movement, that just puts you in the position that occasionally, if you don't get recruited, you're always sort of looking for a next position. And so there's a lot of um, branding relationship to what you do in seeking your next position, in interviewing, in follow-up and so forth. And so, um, and I've just recently gone through that experience. I learned LinkedIn in a way that I'd never imagined <laughs> um, that I would learn it. And so I felt like I could share that as well. Thank you. Just in case you're interested, I am on page four. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Marco. Okay. No, no, not, not a problem at all. Uh, just a couple of more things to add there. One of the things you can read there, I've worked for the Archdiocese for over 25 years, so most of my career has been in ministry, um, and most of that time I've worked in parishes and institutions where um, I, I was recruited or I knew somebody, and so jobs came came pretty easily. Uh, sometimes I was applying for you know those high-paying jobs in the parish that everybody wants, um, usually the only one, but. Um, Couple of point, a couple of times in my year in recent history, particularly, where um, I've had to rethink about the direction of wh where I wanted to continue to go, um, whether it's in ministry or something else, and in many ways having to um, reinvent myself. So the most recent one, two years ago, I, I was uh, director of an immigrant center for the Archdiocese of Chicago, which we lost our funding, 
And so that shut down. And so I had to, that was one of those moments where I had to figure out, am I going to continue in ministry or am I going to do something else? And so I found LinkedIn and other uh, useful tools and I had to uh, figure out sort of a, a bit of a different way to present myself. And again, it wa I wasn't in an, a situation where I can just kind of wait to see who was going to call me next. Um, so I hope that that's what I bring to the conversation this afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Carol Semrad. Um, I have a human resource consulting business and have for the last 11 and a half years. And how I came to that position was I had been in an internal HR position within an organization that we took public. And uh, it was a wonderful adventure, a lot of fun to grow a business. But I realized after uh, we were done with the transaction, I had to lay off 100 of my friends and then myself and literally went home and thought, gee, I hadn't thought about what I'm going to do next. Um, and someone called and offered me a project, and from that I launched a business. What I really learned about in that process was I needed to be able to market and brand myself. And if you go to LinkedIn and you find me, what uh, you'll hear about me as I'm a collaborator and a connector. I like to help people make connections. Um, I feel like that's the, really the way of the world right now, and I want to bring some of that energy to this conversation. So I have to find some way to work LinkedIn into my answer, <laughs> uh, just to, to keep it alive. Uh, so uh, maybe that was it. Um, yeah, my path really, you know, I uh, did my higher ed degree at Iowa State University and thought I would be working in higher education my whole life. Uh, and in Catholic higher education, that's really my background, is in student life, admissions, recruitment, enrollment stuff, you know. So uh, going out on the road, talking with people about what's the best fit for them, what type of degree they're wanting to pursue and why, and, and making all those pieces fit together in terms of financial aid, admissions, the program, uh, their, their dreams and hopes and desires when they're done, and, and loved that work uh, for a long time. That's what I did. I got to sit with people and really say, you know, you, you want to come to Loyola or CTU. I've worked both places, and you want to do the MAPS degree in pastoral studies. Uh, tell me about that. You know, where, where have you come from, and, and where are you going? And then um, about a year ago, uh, you know, as the Spirit sometimes does, you kind of get this restlessness to maybe peek over the other side a little bit and say, well, I've loved what I've done, and, and the Catholic higher education scene is treated me really well, but, you know, maybe it's time for me to go into more advocacy and justice work. And that's really what I did in going to call to action from CTU, actually, is to kind of go more into the justice and advocacy work within the Catholic Church. And so as someone who's relatively recently kind of you know, cross that divide of, you know, thinking I would do one thing, but then kind of switching up a little bit. I hope to bring some of that perspective uh, into the conversation, as well as what it means to do this type of work in a, in a Catholic or faith-based setting, which I know many of you, uh, that's what you hope to do, you know, service in those areas. So, um, and I am on LinkedIn. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for that. Um, so allow me to lead into our first question, which is, what is branding and how does a person begin to have a personal one, a personal brand? Well, I actually have some notes that, that believe it or not, came from LinkedIn. <laughs> so um, one of the things that I would, um, would, would say about this whole process is that there are there's an amazing amount of help out there online now. There's almost nothing that you want to know or any process you want to understand that's not fully um, kind of vetted and explained. And there are guidebooks and, and all kinds of information and materials on the web um, to help you with this, with this process. And, um, and like I say, in the, my last job search, which was a little more difficult for me than usual because I was also transitioning into a more focused area. Mm -hmm. um, I did spend a lot of time on LinkedIn and developed and found very, very good job search resources there. And um, from a woman by the name of Lindsay Pollack, who is a LinkedIn ambassador, um, she talks about branding this way. 
She says, we live in a time of career-free agency where you must regularly prove our unique, your unique value in a competitive and frequently changing marketplace. It's not good enough to have a reputation in your current position. You need to think about how to um, manage and how you're perceived in a broader marketplace of potential future employers. Um, personal branding includes your professional reputation, online image and personal characteristics such as your work style, community engagement, and worldview. It incorporates the particular skills, talents, and areas of expertise that you have cultivated. And so some of the questions that she says that she asks um, uh, people to sort of survey their colleagues. Um, so you could talk to a circle of friends and say, how would, your, how would you describe my strengths? Or um, you can think about yourself in an organization and say, well, who am I the go-to person for? What am I the go-to person for in a given organization? And what do you know more about? Um, and who are you relative to, to most other people? So those are some of the kinds of um, things that she um, says goes into creating and understanding your personal brand. Yes. That sounds a lot. That sounds a lot. A, a lot like what um, Nicole was talking to us about in her keynote, in terms of sharing personal stories. Um, does anybody else have a comment to that question, or a response to that question? I guess I think the most important thing about creating a personal brand is really thinking about what are when you are the happiest. What are you doing? And from that, you'll really be able to define what your own joy is, and from that comes your brand. Um, like I said, I'm a connector and a collaborator. I'm happiest when I'm in a room of people where I don't know anybody, and my job is to get to know everybody before I leave. That's, that, to me, is just a delight. And that comes across both in my brand and in my work. And that has become what I've become known for. Yeah, I'm not happiest in a room. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I think I read somewhere that, you know, 75% of ministers today are introverts or something like that. I don't know if, how, if that's true, but um, I certainly, you know, but I do think this speaks to something, and that is a, a strong sense of self. You know, whether you are happiest, you know, working a room, um, or not, you know, in my case, or if there's other gifts and, and talents and, well, we know there are other gifts and talents that everyone has and, and, and what is the best way to share those? What is the contribution you hope to make? You know, what is the unique niche you hope to fill, whether it's in your workplace, you know, or, you know, a different setting? And so I think, you know, I had a mentor one time say, you know, when people come in for an interview, you know, they're going to share a lot of technical stuff in ways they're really amazing, and they are. But the, the thing for me is to gauge, you know, do they feel comfortable in their own skin, you know? And, and if they do, how do they articulate that sense of personal mission and personal identity, you know? Because, yes, you can kind of, you know, Marco used the words reinvent, you know, but that's always going to be, come out of a reinvention of who you are. You know, and I think the people who really have a good sense of that, not who they think they are, <laughs> or maybe who they want to become, which is great, but a strong sense of, of who they are and, and what they are about. And then I think everything else kind of falls into place after that. You know, not that there's not work or growth or challenge or struggle. Certainly that's the case. You know, we're humans. But... Um, but a strong sense of, of one's own worth and dignity and then how to best share uh, that with the wider community. Yeah, th thank you for that uh, clarification. That's exactly what I, what I meant. Um, in my experience of some of that transition, you know, I could, one of the things I've done over the years, I was a DRE. And so I can simply, or for a while, just, well, I was a DRE at a parish, a Hispanic parish. Um, but even how to, how to um, perhaps articulate that differently, that was the whole sense of reinventing, um, of thinking of myself as how was my, how were my skills, my abilities, my talents uh, useful for that particular parish. We all know that no parish is like the, mm -hmm. the next one. Um, 
So it was a matter of being able to, to reflect on that particular experience and say what made me successful in that particular experience, uh, what were some skills that I was able to develop and use that then could be applicable perhaps to, to whatever was, uh, was going to come next. So yes, that was part of the, uh, uh, of the uh, reinventing. The other thing for me um, in all of this was, um, as I was, as I mentioned, the director of, a, of an immigrant center, this was a center that um, I didn't personally begin, it was begun, but I was the first director. And so I needed to, those of us involved, created a brand for that particular center. And as I began to look at myself personally, I tried to take some of the learnings of that. Um, so as an, as an organization, we talked a lot about mission and vision. And so um, what helped me in, in my transition was thinking of uh, or reflecting on myself and, and my skills, my abilities, in light of you know, what's my vision for, for the, my world vision. Somebody mentioned that, I think, uh, worldview. And what do I see my, my role in all of that? And so what, could I, what might I bring to another, to the next uh, institution, organization, business, whatever, um, whatever that may be. And so that was all part of the, this sort of shift in, in thinking of myself differently, um, and then being able to articulate that as well. Thank you for that. Um, and actually, your comments kind of lead me to uh, the next question, which is, which, which is a function of um, effectively best practices, the how-to manual of of taking one's unique gifts and individuality in order to create the brand. Um, so I hear all of you speaking about the, 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 the necessity of looking at your skills, looking at your gifts, looking at your abilities towards assisting you in creating that brand. But then for someone who is perhaps unfamiliar with looking introspectively, how do you start to do that? And I know one of you talked about, um, and I think it was, it was Kate who talked about gathering friends together um, and finding out about your strengths and weaknesses. But then once you find out what those strengths and weaknesses are, what's that next step that you take? How do you move forward? Well, um, here are some ideas. <laughs> I think it is, if, if one isn't used to sort of thinking introspectively about the kinds of things that sort of formulate a personal identity, um, then I think, you know, the other tack is exactly what you've said. You can begin to look outside um, to try and understand some alignment. Um, and that would be through a circle of friends and family and colleagues who may contribute to your own understanding of your strengths and um, what they've seen about your personal pathway and they could mm -hmm. share that with you. And the other thing is that um, Carol mentioned earlier, um, looking for your bliss, um, what makes you happy, what work you see already, even though you might not understand why you're you're gravitating toward it, um, you can look at that work that's mm -hmm. attractive and begin to analyze the kinds of things that um, are sort of bringing you, um, bringing the interest in that sort of area. Mm -hmm. And that probably is enough to provide some, some guidance and alignment. So if you like this, it's kind of like, it's um, uh, kind of a search mechanism. If you like this, then you'll, you'll like this. And so that sort of thing. So you can bring it in a little bit from the outside. I literally have uh, suggested that people keep a journal. And if you're working on something and you all of a sudden think, oh my goodness, where did the time go? You've probably just lit on something that's really great for you. Make a note of it. Write down in the moment what I really enjoyed about that was. And it might be a conversation you've had with somebody. It might be making a phone call. It might be doing a visit. It might be working with some data. Whatever it is, take note of when you feel the happiest. That will be the birth of your brand.
Yeah, I don't know. I think both of those comments were just so rich. I don't know that I have much to add other than another way to kind of take stock of that is, you know, in the Catholic tradition, you know, using the old examine every day, you know, uh, to sit down. And, and if you don't have time or that isn't a habit for you to, you know, you're in the, you're so in the moment that you forgot to reflect on your moment, you know, that, you know, then at the end of the day, you know, if you're having that prayerful reflection and you, you just think back whether you do like a kind of a rigid examine or whether you just kind of, you know, talk to God and just look back over the day and say, you know, where were those bursts of sunshine and, and, and energy and, and where weren't they, <laughs> you know, or what was the challenge or the struggle? And I find that to be one of the most important ways for me to take t stock of that, you know, because then you can lean in to those, those areas where there was sunlight and there, where there was energy. You can more fully kind of, you know, lean into those strengths and those areas of passion. And so, so whether, yeah, it's writing a journal, which I think is an awesome idea, mm -hmm. um, uh, for me, that wouldn't work, but I know for a lot that does. For me, it's more at the end of the day or in, in a moment of quiet reflection to think back. It's kind of like you trace through your day mm -hmm. and kind of notice things. And um, that's one way I've been able to do that, I think. I think, I think all, of, all of your um, suggestions are, are definitely helpful. I actually never thought about um, and I don't know if any of you feel the same way, thought about, about reflecting back on, some, on, a, on a period of time in which you found yourself immersed and lost, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, wait a minute. It's like five o'clock and just two minutes ago it was two. Um, and taking note of that, that's, that's really an interesting way to kind of go about making those first steps. Um, I have a different question for all of you, though. And I'm sorry I did not um, express this earlier. At any point in time, you all can feel free to, to chime in with a question if you happen to have one. So don't, don't hesitate if you have a question. Um, are discussions about branding and ministry unseemly? And this is why I asked the question. I think um, a lot of times we look at um, techniques or concepts or ideologies in one, one area um, and we tend to overlook them because we don't think that that's something that could work in our area, in our space, um, that those tools wouldn't necess necessarily be beneficial to us. Uh, and I think marketing as, as, a, as a discipline and as an arena tends to get in a lot of ways a bad rap. Um, and especially when you're thinking about uh, concepts that are more uh, humanistically based, so you're thinking of faith, um, you're thinking of religion, you don't necessarily think of marketing, you're not geared to think about things like branding. Um, and so to, to, to say to a, a room full of ministers, you should think about branding, I imagine that there are some people who might be uh, cautious about that. So I'm, I'm curious as to whether you think um, speaking in concert about branding and ministry or branding and faith is in any way, shape, or form problematic, um, or, or maybe it's not. I was just going to, you know, um, I think it's important we, f we first understand what do we mean by branding, you know, um, because that word is kind of a you know, a, a catch word or a catch phrase, you know, we say, oh, we're going to do branding. And people are like, oh, great, our logo looks awesome, or it doesn't. So we need to, you know, find a clip art or something, you know, like, so these are the real, you know, so what, what do we mean, you know, when we say branding today? I think it's really important. So if you have people you're working with and they're saying, oh, well, we need a new brand, what, what do you mean when you say you need a new brand? And so I think there are just a couple, real quickly, um, things to consider when you talk about branding. The most obvious, and perhaps what people think of the most, is your logo, your font treatments, you know, how it looks on a flyer, and, you know, for call to action, we just went through a rebranding process where we have a new logo, new colors, you know, so that's really important. People say, oh, well, that's your brand then. Yes and no. <laughs> yes, it is, and it's certainly a part of it, but that's just the public face 
of a brand. You know, it, it's kind of like that iceberg, you know, metaphor where that's the part you see above the water, but then there's the whole, the biggest, the most important part of branding is not what you see. You know, it, it's not kind of the glitzy logo and stuff. That is important. I'm not saying it's not crucial for consistency purposes. But then you have what Nicole did such a beautiful job of earlier today talking about, well, what's the story that props up the brand or the collective of stories that make that a tradition or that make that key to the brand? You know, most people will say, well, what is your brand, you know? And uh, some people, I like to say, well, branding really, when people say, what is your brand? I say, well, ask other people what our brand is. That's our brand, right? So you think, oh, well, our brand is justice and you know that's that's our brand and and the public says that's not what we perceive your brand to be right so focus groups other things to talk with folks about you know okay people recognize the apple symbol but what does apple really stand for <laughs> you know they they know the apple they see it that that's check on their branding they've done that successfully well apple's done it all successfully if you you know but probably not the best example so you know so when we talk about branding i think it's really important you know especially if you're in that cultivating a brand both for yourself and perhaps for ministries that you're working with to be clear on what you mean by brand you know and, and be on the same page about that because i think there's a lot that be, can be included under that and um yeah, it's just one of those words that we use a lot, but I don't know that we necessarily understand what it is. Concretize it well. I I think of brand in terms of demonstrating your values, not your value, but your values. What do you stand for? And what you stand for really becomes what your brand is. And if you're living in what you stand for, then you'll always be showing that to the world. It'll be really easy because you don't have to make it up because you, it will be who you are and it'll be seamless be, between what you want people to see and what they in fact see. So I encourage you as you're crafting your brand, look in the mirror. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Yes. I just what you're talking about makes me think of politics. It makes me think of the debate between uh, pro life advocates and the other people. Um, and the fact that people have a hard time if you're an independent or if you are somewhere in between the pro life voice and the other voice. Um, they don't know where to put you. They don't know how to brand you. And in our in American society, the polls I've been getting daily, um, they want to put you in a corner. Um, so if your brand is, I like the way you describe the brand, the call to action, is an independent, where you're not, you're kind of here, there, a little bit here and there. Um, it's really confuses people um, because when we apply, let's, let's say, to CCU, even everybody wants to put you in a computer. They want you to put, put that X there, and there is no gray space in a computer. You can't have that gray space. You're not welcome to that gray space. So I, I just, I don't know if somebody can comment to that, um, but that would be my brand. And when I'm thinking what you all described your brand, I mean, that's my, I'm great. <laughs> but I think you have, you have values, right. and those values might look like a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's, that's actually a brand unto itself. And there is a place where that would be so welcome. All you have to do is identify what that place is. And you'll know it because it'll look like you and you'll look like them and it'll feel like, oh yeah, I belong here because you'll have a values match.
who I am, but when I'm doing branding for myself in the Catholic context, I know I have to be then careful, what do I reflect back from that mirror to my Facebook feed, to my Twitter, to in my conversations with people. Uh, I've worked in a former job with uh, Catholic ministers who are fired, and it's because they something's been found in their Facebook feed, they've had a conversation in the car with someone who went and told someone in the diocese, and so I think also in branding, you just have to be careful to know who you are, but to also know what you're going to share as part of your brand. So for example, call to action is many colors, but they chose blue and yellow and blue and orange, and I think similarly, when you're thinking about who you are as a brand in the Catholic context, you have to think about, yeah, I may have all of these parts of me, what am I going to share publicly? Um, and sometimes, one day, perhaps you'll share them all and be ready to let that be seen and also follow the journey that that may take you, that that does mean being fired or whatnot. But I think as Catholics, particularly in the ministerial context, we have to be aware of um, what story we're telling on a daily basis in our daily branding. Mm -hmm. So just a piece from that part. Okay, thank you for that. Um, my next question for the panel, unless someone else has a question, is um, let's talk about faith branding as a concept. Um, I know that we've spoken about branding a little bit in the general, and Nicole has kind of brought us to um, focusing on Catholicism and branding within Catholicism. But let's talk about faith branding and w what that potentially could look like and why potentially it's important for um, a minister to have a better understanding of how he or she is branding him or herself and subsequently how he or she is branding the faith. Well, that's a, it's a really interesting notion. I hadn't thought uh, quite about privacy in the way that you expressed some of the central issues of privacy in social media, especially. Um, I, you know, I guess my only comment really is that there is a way in which you, in your roles, represent faith as apart from yourselves, even. So you will have, because um, you won't always be, I mean, you're independent. You won't always be, you won't be personally sort of exactly aligned um, with the kind of faith that you're called to represent mm -hmm. sometimes. And that, you know, that's a sort of intriguing um, thought for me. <laughs> I am not Catholic, and so I, and you know, and don't sort of have any kind of faith, particularly in my life, that I that causes me dissonance. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just you know a, a very interesting kind of sort of aspect of this that you have to wrestle with. That mm -hmm. maybe others have more insight about. But it's um, it sounds like it could be a very important sort of um, personal understanding issue. But Kate, you have, I assume that you have aspects of yourself that perhaps in a very particular arena you perhaps would not um, expose? Well, sure. I mean, I, I think everyone who is an ad, you know, an avid social media user, and I guess, and I, guess I would say I am, um, I really dived wholeheartedly into LinkedIn and discovered that other people were too. Um, Are you sure you're not a LinkedIn plant? No. <laughs> but, but what I discovered in my job search is that, and I didn't realize how important it was, I actually put a little, so it was myself and my sister who were supportive of one another when we worked through our respective job searches within the last year. So mm -hmm. we were kind of bolstering one another. And she was attending um, a career group out in Barrington. 
and it was those folks who sent her these consistent messages, do LinkedIn, do LinkedIn, and do LinkedIn, furthermore, this way. Mm -hmm. um, so Mary would just sort of pass that along to me, and I thought, all right, well, I couldn't submit an online resume and I joined LinkedIn at the business level so you can see who's looking at your profile. Mm -hmm. I could not submit anything anywhere without having the HR person who, or the hiring manager, whoever it was, was jumping on my profile within 48 hours mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uniformly. Mm -hmm. So I know how much people are using this. But in that and Facebook and Twitter and all the other kinds of ways that you can reach out, I'm very deliberate about what I share in which space. Mm -hmm. And I guess yeah. that's the way privacy, you know, and these kinds of issues of representation affect me. Mm -hmm. Because like you in the ministry and you have a faith to uphold and represent and share and, you know, and reach out about and then there's you. Um, you know, I have I'm who I am and then I have North Shore that I represent. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and those two aren't the same mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And so you do have to be careful about which way that you reach out and what what sort of, so LinkedIn for me is all, all about profession. And then Facebook is what I, is more confined and it's friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's. You compartmentalize yeah. in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, Maybe just one thing I can I can share is um, that I think also it, it's part of this is uh, and we've been talking about being introspective and knowing who you are and where you stand and at some point making some kind of a taking some kind of a stance or making some kind of a commitment to uh, to your authenticity. Um, I speak in terms of um, and again my experience in my years in ministry. Uh, there have been moments uh, and times that I've been involved with groups who have been a lot more vocal and critical of the institution. Um, and I've had to face the, the decision of how closely do I want to align myself with, with groups of people like that. Um, or am I more concerned about perhaps being able to, to climb a ladder? And so um, I've made certain choices that for a time period I've had to pay the price for. Um, now personnel changes and those who've been criticized have mm -hmm. gone away and so things can change for you. But, um, but for me, I guess the word that just jumps out is the, the authenticity and you have to make a decision for yourself as to how authentic you want to be to what you believe and, and what you stand for. Um, or do you make a decision towards successful career climbing, I guess, or something. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a question. I mean, just, I think it's something we each have to face. But it goes, I think, to the... Uh, to the, to the branding, and I'll make one last, just one last example, is even um, having been a student at CTU and having worked for, and now working here at CTU, um, you know, uh, uh, there's certain baggage that comes with that, um, and we can judge it as good or bad, but you know, um, people have asked, you know, so are you still Catholic? Because you're attending CTU? Um, yeah, well, that was when I was a student. Now that I work wow. here, I, I hadn't heard it, but when I was a student, uh, and you comment to some people who really um, looked at, uh, at uh, CTU as a very liberal place, and you know, which is kind of off the cuff comments, but, but they were there. Mm -hmm. wow. Well, if Marco isn't Catholic, then I'm really in trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I think. I only have two quick comments about this. I think one is, you know, if you adhere to your values, everything will take care of itself. Um, so I think that's the most important piece. The second piece is, is I think you have to recognize the boundaries between if you're employed by the church, uh, it becomes a little bit murky. But I think you have, what you're doing as a part of your role within the church and what you're doing, um, f who you are, based on who you are. Now, lately those degrees of separation have been closing <laughs> in some places. Um, who, and I won't go into that because this isn't the time or the place. But, um, but just know that I think in some places, you know, your performance as a competent professional in a field is one thing. And then who you are as a Catholic or a Jewish person or, you know, is another. And in some areas, especially in ministerial areas, there's definite overlap there. 
you know. Um, but but there needs to be boundaries there as well, um, especially if some of the positions you want to take, you know, um, how I I'm, I know this is taped, um, especially if some of the things you're about um, don't always align with certain positions. You know what I'm talking about, so I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that, everyone. Um, next question for you. So we've been talking about faith branding. We've been talking about personal branding. Um, and I'd like to know from the four of you, what are the things that today's individuals need to know or understand about trends in branding and their usefulness? So for example, I joked a little earlier about Kate being a plant for LinkedIn. Um, but you, she raises a very clear and a very valid point. I keep getting these LinkedIn invitations and I'm like, okay, I don't need another social media connection. I'm, I'm okay with one or two, but if I'm attempting to put my brand out there as a minister or as a gainfully, hopefully gainfully employed individual, it, it's a legitimate um, thing to consider participating um, in, a social, uh, in, in a social interface such as LinkedIn. So as ministers, we, we don't necessarily, we aren't necessarily exposed as much as we ought to be to the, the new and incoming trends that are being utilized in the greater world um, in, in terms of finding a position or, or at least making those connections. So, are you familiar with some of the trends that are out there today? And if you are, can you speak to them, um, help familiarize some of us like myself who are ignorant about them, um, about what they do and about, about the pertinence to my career path, for example? Well, I don't think you can deny social media is here to stay. It's a new form of communication. I mean, everybody here has a telephone. Nobody here would think I don't want to use a telephone anymore. I only want to write letters. I think that would be really archaic. Um, so social media, is, it's just another form of communication. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, there's privacy settings on all of the social media outlets. So you can make a choice of what you want to show to whom. Um, of course, if the more transparent you are and the more the more you can be in alignment with who you are and how you show up, mm -hmm. the easier it is. Um, but I don't think you can deny that it's out there and it's being used by employers to hire people. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, I mean these are all actively being used by employers to look at people and whether or not you like it, they are looking at you. Mm -hmm. If you are on it, they are looking at you. So if you get a choice of what they can look at, you want to look the best you can look for the job that you want to do. So I think it's really important to invest time and energy in using all the resources that are out there to get it right. Check it out with people that you um, have interests with to say, you know, if you were th in this position looking for this person, have I positioned myself appropriately so that you get some feedback? But I don't think you can deny it's just a part of being in the world. And the more you deny it, the more you start to look like you really aren't paying attention to what's going on, mm -hmm. and you'll be left behind. Right, so I, I, I'm going to start accepting one of those invitations on LinkedIn then. Yeah, just um, two things. Uh, the first is you talk about trends. I, I do think, you know, social media obviously is one um, for many reasons. But just because there's new advances in technology doesn't mean that the small things don't matter. You know, I think it's still... Yeah, it's a both and, you know. This really is an example of a yes, both and, where thank you notes. Can I come in and talk to you about your, you know, we used to do these things. And, and I know they still happen, but someone's like, well, I sent them a LinkedIn notice, so they'll notice me. It's like, mm, maybe, maybe not. So I think 
as much as there's been this explosion of social and other media, new media we call it, um, the small things still matter quite a bit, you know, in terms of building relationships. And that's really what the heart of it is about, is building rela authentic relationships. So whether that means I want to go in and meet with you because I find, I think you're doing an incredible job and wherever I go and I want to do similar things, mm -hmm. you know, that still has a lot of currency, you know, or thank you notes or showing up for hospitality functions. I mean, those things are still really, really important. So as much as technology seems to be the new way to connect, I, yeah, it's a both and, still a both and, which in some ways makes, you know, these things harder. Easier in some ways, but harder in some ways because you're now doing kind of two things or you hope to do kind of two things well. So I think, you know, that's just a big piece is that small things really matter. So, and now I don't know what my second thing was, so I'm just... <laughs> Well, I could jump in and she say that. She knows it, though, so that's good. <laughs> I, um, I think uh, social media is driving networking harder than it's ever been driven before, too. So you all know the value of staying connected to your alumni group and the connections and bonds that you've formed here and the professional associations that you belong to. Um, that sort of networking is expanding because people are sort of finding it is enhanced by social media. So um, looking around and finding the professional groups where you feel like you have a fit, um, making contact with other people who are, you know, going your direction um, that, you know, is an interesting circle for, um, you know, for you for one reason or another. I think that's a, uh, that was also sort of a buzzword for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Just, but I think networking now has sort of an additional level of meaning and is, is more important than ever. And I think that's another sort of growing trend and it's not going away, mm -hmm. so. Thank you for that. Um, I think now would be a good time to take questions if anybody happens to have any questions outside of myself in regard to our topic matter. Um, Bob Dylan once said everybody serves someone. And this is uh, maybe more directed to you. And you said you're, you're connected to North Shore and that's uh, pretty correct that your alliances are with North Shore because that's who you represent and both. Right. When you have not, I know they just merged with uh, Ed Evans, um, when you have a situation like a Hobby Lobby situation or a whatever, uh, I don't know who else falls into that category, um, when you're trying to serve your God, whoever your God is, and you're trying to serve your employer, there's a, uh, a disconnect or a conflict, um, and then that becomes your brand um, in a sense. I don't know if you could speak on that or not. Just it's just something that has watched the politics of the HHS mandate um, unravel. Um, I'm just trying trying to sort sort it out as a Catholic, uh, the little sisters of the poor and their and in what they're doing, and the everyday working class American who's just trying to survive. Um, it's really hard to serve your God. Well, I think um, we've sort of touched on up here earlier that, you know, there are these sort of two um, kinds of conjoining sort of systems that you're trying to align um, what you represent and, you know, who you've um, and how you diverge as a human being from that representation. And I think um, I can think of things exactly in my life that I would not do because I couldn't bring enough alignment between an organization and myself. Um, I've always been in nonprofit work and that was my first level of alignment. I wanted to be in nonprofit work rather than for-profit work. So, you know, that's settled. But there are even you know, nonprofits that I would not work for because I couldn't bring enough alignment. So I think that, you know, there can be choices that you have to make in your, in your life about that. 
Yeah, I think that's why doing your homework and match and fit is so important. So it doesn't mean there will never be conflict, but it, it does mean, you know, as you're looking at employers, you know, um, knowing yourself, you know, helps you know whether or not you're, and knowing the employer, but is there a synergy there? Is there values over? Not completely, you know, you'll have to, people will make this call for themselves. You know, but match is so important because if you go in and, and you know you want the job, but the company's values or ethos is is you like the job, but the culture say isn't what you know. Like that's when you have some of these head-on collisions, you know, and that's what can be really hurtful. So I think doing your homework ahead of time to make sure there's some key areas of synergism there is really important. Any other questions? Yes. In your job searches and in your networking, have you ever been in a situation or found a sense of conflict in terms of trying to present yourself as an employee or as a potential employee and bringing up the idea of humility? Um, is that something that you've encountered in, in networking or in your job searches? I think it's really important when you're networking to show up as who you are and then the rest of your concerns go away. Um, I always think about it in terms of I can bring my gift with me wherever I go. To some people it seems delightful, to other people it seems totally irritating. They might not want to talk to me right then but I might want to talk to them. or. If I'm in line at the Starbucks and I say good morning to somebody, every once in a while somebody will look at me and say, it's not a good morning. And I'm like, sorry, I didn't know that. Bring your gift of who you are. If it's the right place for you to be, it will be accepted with grace and it will work. If it's not, go to the next one. It doesn't matter. We don't all fit every place, every time. It's okay. We're not meant to. And one of the things that I learned um, very early on that I think has really helped me enormously in my work, um, I'm in advancement. Um, right now I work in plan giving, so I work mostly with older adults um, who are interested in supporting North Shore. Um, but throughout my life, I've worked with various individuals who I'm trying to bring in alignment with, you know, doing good work or having a good purpose with an institution um, as a partner. Um, and, you know, people sort of think of development occasionally as sales or that you have to be um, someone who's kind of more extroverted than I certainly consider myself to be. And some people have expectations about, you know, this kind of work and who fits. But what I've discovered is that it's far more important, not only do you show up sort of authentically as who you are, but you are more interested in who they are. And so if you just always sort of approach um, going into a situation more concerned about what you're giving, how you're supporting, how you're making someone else feel, how they're doing that day, um, that gets you, I think, further along in relationship building and real caring than almost anything else I've discovered. Any other questions? I, oh, I was, I was just going to echo that. I think sometimes when we go and do job search stuff, it's we show up and we, we want to tell them all about who we are, and you know, like, and and naturally there's a haste to kind of represent who you are, and you know, you have such little time usually with with people who make these sorts of decisions. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, showing up and and communicating who you are is listening about their mission. You know, is asking questions, you know, not just any question, but questions you've come to you, tell me more about, you know. So I think, you know, er, when I look at early in my career, it'd be like, okay, I'm Ryan and I'm really good at, you know, like I did this internship and I, you know. And later on, it was like, that's nice stuff, you know, but um, I think the more um, maybe successful conversations have you know, been about, you know, not having a haste of sharing my background because they can get your resume and look at all that stuff. But it's really having a genuine dialogue with them about tell me what you're needing right now. What is, 
North Shore, what are some of the goals you're hoping to accomplish, you know, over the course of the next five years, you know, and, you know, so it's kind of that two-way transaction between, yes, share a little bit about yourself and who you are, but also use that opportunity to get to know them a little bit. I think it kind of communicates, okay, this person is in it for the right reasons. It's not just, because you were talking about humility and sometimes, you know, um, job search stuff can seem like, well, I'm just putting all my great, you know, I'm the best thing ever, you know? And sure, you wanna share your gifts and you wanna do so proudly, but the other side of that coin is listening to, to what they need or what they're wanting, you know, and asking questions to get at that. Yeah, and I would just add that I think that's where we're, we are at an advantage, and I say we, I think most of us in this room, if I understand correctly, we're probably all in, all in ministry. And so we have those skills, so let's make use of those skills. We have those skills of listening to people and showing that we genuinely, genuinely are interested in what they, they have to say, what they have to offer. And so, yeah. Thank you for that. Were there any other questions? And I have a mic. Okay. Well, I have to say, Kate Chapel. Marco Lopez, Carol Semrad, and Ryan Hoffman, you were amazing as panelists. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for really bringing uh, everything back to this concept, this heart of relationship that should be networking. Thank you so very much for this conversation. Thank you.